the age of six, I went to St. Anne's High School, which was uh, a nunnery. This cloistering uh, resulted in me reading a lot of books and, you know, gave me a more comprehensive picture of the world. I realized that, you know, people had done so many great things and I thought, yes, it is possible for me too. I can do it. The first gene was discovered around 83. And I was very clear that I wanted to be a biologist by then. Molecular biology and genomics came as a succession to medical biochemistry. I'm the founder of a company, Avestagen Limited. I said there has to be a flip over into new innovation. I realized that my community, the Zoroastrian community in India, being an endogamous community, which are very precious in genomic studies, was diminishing rapidly. Then I said, Vilu, why don't you create a collection for study of longevity genes? Because this community lives very long. They ate well, they drank well, but there was one thing they did not do, and that was smoke, largely because they worshiped fire and the fire could not be fouled. The next step is to finish the sequencing. So the funding from the foundation is going to go towards collection of 1,300 smokers and non-smokers, focusing only on those who have lung cancer. The Parsi collection offers a good reference genome as a parallel, and then using that signature as a predictive tool for population at large. So those genetic test panels should carry these biomarkers because India being one of the largest people who use tobacco, giving them an opportunity to be predicted if they are susceptible to cancer or not, is a huge contribution. The Foundation for Smoke Free World, they are efficient. They give us the opportunity to explore. You need to change thoughts every seven years on how you revisit old existing problems. People change just like the world is changing. I have not found a person like her who has that uh, multiple uh, multi-dimensional approach. Not only science, uh, she also attacks the sociological uh, impact as well. There's always a way out, and that's something she's taught us. You know, there's always um, a solution, no matter how um, difficult or impossible a problem seems. There's always a solution if you think in a different manner. Without risk, you cannot create. When I was a little kid, I I don't know why, but I used to start moving myself to the very edge of a seat or a tilt the chair to see if I fall or not. In a biotech company or in a, any sort of company where it's creative, you've got to push yourself to that tipping point to try to make the world a better place.